Shalom. Today we are going to discuss the names of the first ten generations of human beings as listed in Chronicles 1. As you can see, these are just the names of the ten people. And there are uh, no begats in here, just names which leads us to think that we might could read it as one sentence. I would like to say that I did not develop this idea at all. I'm just going to review it for people who can uh, read and understand some Hebrew. I first heard this idea from Chuck Missler many years ago. He does discuss it in his book, Cosmic Codes, which came out in 1999. And he has a footnote in the chapter concerning this that uh, he put it out in his personal update newsletter in 96. I'm not sure when I heard it. I believe I heard it before that on his radio program um, when I first came here and I got my first job and I was driving home into the sunset from that job uh, every day. His program was on the radio. And so I'm thinking possibly I heard it in the late 80s, but it was definitely from him. I don't know whether he took his information from somewhere else or he was the discoverer of this uh, hidden message. Uh, I would certainly like to hear from you if you have other information about it from uh, any time prior to the late 90s. So the first man's name is Adam and it is his name but it also means in general the human being. We have this phrase, ben Adam, which when you read in Ezekiel, the son of man, this is what it is, ben Adam. In modern Hebrew, they still use the phrase ben Adam to refer to any human being. Oh, such and such a man. They'll use the phrase ben Adam. He's the son of man. He's a human being. We see that if we put a hey at the end, we get Adama. And Adama means dirt, and that is where the man came from. He is made out of dirt. We also see in this root the word Edom, um, which means uh, is translated as Edom, as I say in English. It has a special meaning for the character of Esau, and you can learn about that elsewhere. Also, the name Adom, the word Adom, means red, uh, such as in the red heifer, para aduma, and we know that dirt is red, especially here in Georgia, where I live. We also can see the root for dam inside the adam, and dam is blood. So we see that the blood is in the human being. This is the first man, he's a human being, adam. The second name is Shait, uh, translated as Seth in English. And you can read when Eve give birth, gives birth to him, the translation there is, is that he, she names him that because she said, God has appointed me another table, Hevel. So this is the root, Shait, and it has uh, many different meanings and implications for the idea of a garment, like, like we are a garment, for our, our body is a garment for our soul and our spirit. It means to put in place, to put something in place. The next person is Enosh, and uh, this is translated in English as Enos. And this is also related to the word for man. If you know some Hebrew, you know that the singular word for man is ish, and the plural is anashim. So this is a little tricky thing. Uh, I think anashim and nashim, women, are the only two irregular plurals in Hebrew. So that's a great break if you're studying Hebrew compared to English. The idea of Ish Anashim brings with it the mortality, the weakness of the human being. 
The fourth fellow is named Canaan, and his name is also related to the name of Cain, Cain. They have the same root. And the root for this word literally means a nest. It's the place where the bird lives. It's related to two other roots. Kana with a hay, which means to buy, to acquire. Uh, it's the modern word for Hebrew, in Hebrew, to buy something. There are places in scripture where God is described as kone et hakol, the one who owns everything. He has acquired everything, just as the bird has built the nest by acquiring all these different pieces of sticks and trash and feathers and making the nest the place for the uh, chicks to dwell. And then we also have kana with an aleph, which uh, mean, is sometimes translated as zealous and sometimes as jealous. And the idea, is they're both kind of the same emotion. We associate jealousy with envy, like, oh, I would like to have what that other person has. But really, the idea is zealous, to be fervent in action and to be guarding and wanting to have the possession, the idea of the possession in the, of the bird in the, the nest. Um, it also brings up this imagery of God being zealous for us wanting to take care of us, letting us be under the shadow of his wing. The next fellow is Mahalalel. And you can see in the middle there the root, Halal, which is the same word as we use for Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Hallelujah is a command form. Praise, y'all praise. And Yah is a shortened form of Yahweh, Yehovah. The mem in front is a verb prefix, which can make it a present tense verb or the person who is doing that action. So Mahalalel is someone who is actively, currently praising God. The next fellow is Yared. And uh, his name is associated with the name of a river in Israel that you probably know. And that is the Yarden, the Jordan River. The Yarden starts uh, high in a mountain, and then it flows down to the lowest point on earth in the Dead Sea. So Yarad, the root behind this, means to descend. The next fellow is Chanoch, and for some reason beyond my understanding, it became Enoch in, in English. Now this is a word you also know, this root, from the holiday of Chanukah. And if you read in John, it says it was the festival of dedication. So Chanoch carries with it an idea of dedicating something, set apart for something, specifically with respect to education. In Proverbs, where it says, train up a child in the way he should go, you can see there the train up is chanoch. In Israel, the education department is a department of chinuch. So we have this idea of being dedicated, especially set apart, but in a way of training, of teaching, of educating. The next fellow, the oldest man in the Bible, Methuselah, Methuselah. And his name is made up of two parts. The initial two letters, Memtav, are from the root to die, to uh, death. And the Vav there could be construed as a possessive pronoun, his death. Shalach means send or sent. 
maybe you have heard about people talking about the apostles as being shaliach, or in the plural, shlichim. This is the ones who are sent. So his death will send. The ninth fellow is named Lamech. And uh, his translation of his name is a, a little bit difficult. We can look at it in two ways. If you look at any Strong's or Concordance, it will tell you that it means a strong person or a young, strong young person. And I believe this comes from the idea of the Lamech who is on Cain's side of the family. And he's the one who had two wives. He was the first one to do so. And he slays a young man. And he says to his wives, if Cain is avenged seven times, then I will be avenged 77 times. There's not really a great root, a three-letter root that we could look at in Hebrew to determine what his name actually means. There is another possibility. There is a word which appears in a few places, uh, poetically speaking. It's Lamo, Lamed Mem, Kolumbav. And it is translated as a small preposition, at or to or for in this case. And it is believed to be a contraction of the Lamed, which is the preposition to, and the Mem, uh, standing for Ma. In other words, for what or to what. The Cholom Vav at the end is a third person masculine singular. To what end? The end being represented by the him there. The Ma is a masculine singular. To what? In this case, if the children are multiplied, for what? It'll be for the sword. In other words, they're going to be slaughtered. Since we know that that cholom vav is for the third person masculine singular, we know that the kaf at the end will be for the second person uh, singular, either masculine or feminine. So we could stretch this a little bit and say that this is to you or for you. You are the end of the uh, what the whole sentence is, is indicating, which we're going to see in one minute. It's a little bit of a stretch. We don't have to use it. And of course, the last fellow is Noach. And it tells you there when his father names him that uh, he says, this one will bring us comfort. So Noach is comfort. So now we have these uh, 10 word sentence, then we'll see what it says. Man, the human being, is set in place for mortality, and the place that he's set in is this nest, which he's going to build and work to own and uh, shelter his young, And but that is also going to fade away in a mortal way. Here comes a person praising God, he descends. He is a dedicated or taught, taught one. His death will send either you or the strong one comfort. It's a pretty compelling prophecy of Mashiach. So here is another form of code which has lately come back into the news. People denying it. Uh, some years ago, Yitzchak Kaduri, who is a very famous rabbi, passed away at the age of 108 or so. Nobody's exactly sure how old he was. He left this note, and he said that um, it should be opened a year after his death. And so the top line says, Be'inyan haroshe tevot shel Mashiach. In the matter of, roshe tevot means the first uh, letter of each word following. So for example, in English, we use NASA as a word, but it's not. It stands for something. The N is for national, the A is for aeronautics, the S is for space, and the uh, 
Last A is for administration. So this is an example in English of Roche Tevot, the, the initial letters uh, of the Messiah. And he wrote, Yarim Ha'am Bayechiach Shedvaro Vitorato Omdim. So we have a Yud, a He, a Vav, a Shin, another Vav, and an Ayin, which clearly spells Yehoshua, which is the extended name of Yeshua. So people are saying it, I mean, people are horrified. No, he can't have believed that that horrible Christian Jesus was the Messiah. I don't, I don't know what, I, what he believed. I know that there are people from his uh, yeshiva speaking out now, uh, saying what he did teach about Mashiach, and they are becoming believers in big numbers. So continue to pray for that work over there in the land. And uh, until next time, keep your eye on the sky. Every day we see your redemption drawing nigh. Shalom.